Welcome to my workplace at Ranaghat, West Bengal, India. Let us observe this totally unedited surgery. Let us see how I managed uh, these steps when intraoperative meiosis occurred. This is the main incision with a 2.8 millimeter steel keratome. This is a slow surgery. It will take about 12 minutes. So please uh, get some time to watch this surgery. This is a side port on the left side of the main incision and it is an intumescent cataract and I know that people is going to be small uh, during emulsification of the pieces. Tripan blue goes in underneath an air bubble. The staining is very quick because the dye is not diluted and it sits on the anterior capsule if an air bubble is used. Now the dye is washed out. We have used adrenaline but the people has not dilated much. But the size of the people is about 5 millimeter and at this moment and an adequate size rexis can be done. And uh, uh, it's an intermescent cataract. I'm planning uh, double twist twisted rexis. This is a C flap by a needle. Uh, the C flap, there's a, there's a study at uh, Arbind Madurai that this C flap uh, keeps some guard over Argentine flag sign. So if we can make a C flap, this Argentine flag sign usually doesn't occur. The C flap is converted into a small rexis. Now I am using this cannula. This is a two-way Simco and irrigation aspiration is occurring and some cortical lens matter is being removed from the capsular bag. Thus the intralenticular pressure is drastically reduced. After this, yes, this is done for quite some time so that there is no elevation of the, you know, of the uh, anterior surface of the lens anywhere. The visco is injected and the anticapsule is flat. When this happens, chance of rexis run out is almost zero. I have made a nick and now I take the utrita forceps, hold the capsular tag and do a rexis along the border of the pupil to get an adequate size rexis of about 5 millimeter. Once this is done, the case can be managed even if intraoperative meiosis occurs in during uh, emulsification of the pieces. But it is always safer to use uh, a people expansion device at any step, focusing again and now the hand goes into the anterior chamber. buzzing in and the tip is buried into the substance of the nucleus. The nucleus is held very firmly and a nice crack happens. Come to the other side, no not the other side, hold the semi-nucleus and make another good crack. So see how direct chaff helps. Hold firmly and make a crack. This is a brittle nucleus and I am getting cracks very easily. Sometimes brown cataracts will have leathery posterior plate and it may not be as easy as this one. Now I start emulsifying the pieces and when I start emulsifying the pieces, people starts coming down and see at this time the size of the people is about 3.5 millimeter. 
I'm keeping the handpiece at the center. The people is not floppy. That's why chance of catching the eyes is minimized. Is less if I place the handpiece at the center of the people. Yes. All the pieces have been removed, and I cannot see any cortex. But there are a lot of cortex hidden under the iris. Let us see what kind of instrument we can use to examine the cortex. There is an instrument we can call it Y hook. This is Y shaped hook and we can retract the iris and we can see that there are a lot of cortex all around. And we have to remove this cortex. At this time one can use a BHEX ring to visualize better and uh, to remove the cortex, but it is possible to remove the cortex by a Simco without seeing. Just sweep the Simco and you can catch the cortical lens matter. This is the beauty of the Simco cannula. So a lot of cortex has been removed and now I have to go through the sideboard and remove the cortex from the rest of the area. Yes, so just keep aspirating and sweep the uh, you know, tip of the Simco and you have to judge uh, how, where you are you know, and you can remove the cortex without seeing. But this is up to you whether you, you will use this technique or you will use a uh, bimanual IA with uh, people expansion device that is up to you. And now I inject visco, people doesn't dilate at this time, visco matrices doesn't occur because we have touched the iris and the people has come down. No. And now a little bit of extension of the main wound because uh, I am using a B cartridge, size of the wound becomes about 3.1 millimeter. And oh, here goes a uh, uh, single piece monofocal intraocular lens. The leading haptic is directed, it goes in the capsular bag and the trailing has haptic is pressed by the left hand instrument and it also goes in the capsular bag. But we have to check whether it is in the capsular bag or not. Again, the uh, you know, after injecting some visco, remove all the air bubbles so that we can see clearly. Uh, then inject visco, and we can use the eye hook again to see if the lens is in the bag or whether I have removed all the cortex or not. And I find that I have removed most of the cortex some cortex is remaining at around 8 o'clock only. All other area the cortex is nicely removed. So I have to go with Simco and remove the cortex from 8 o'clock. Little bit of cortex is remaining there. This is the no removal of the cortex, at least attempt to remove that cortex. Nothing came, probably that is some fibrous tissue sticking to the posterior capsule and anterior capsule that looked like cortex. And this is removal of visco from the anterior chamber. So, lot of visco remains under the iris, under the lens also. So, I have to go behind the lens and irrigate and aspirate that area. So, 
the job of Simco is over now. I take bimanual irrigation aspiration and do some more visco cleaning. Irrigate all around and then irrigation and aspiration cannula works together. Aspiration cannula is swept all around. And now I go behind the lens, irrigate in that area. Aspiration cannula is kept above and irrigation and aspiration is carried out for some more time. We have to be always at a far distance from the corneal endothelium. The most precious tissue uh, is corneal endothelium. It is more precious than the posterior capsule. If we rupture the posterior capsule, we can do antivitectomy and we can manage the case. But if we damage uh, corneal endothelium to such an extent that uh, DSEC or DMEG becomes necessary, then it is a very you know, tough situation depending on donor tissue and very high skilled corneal surgeon is required to manage that situation. That the chamber is nicely formed after a final lavage, few drops of moxie is applied over the ocular surface, the integrity of the wounds are checked and then the case is concluded. Thank you very much for your attention. Hope this video will help you in developing your surgical skills. Be a great surgeon and serve your patients with love, respect, empathy and great surgical competence.